Hello everyone, I'm Norman Wahlberger. Today we're going to carry on with the row reduction algorithm, explaining how you perform this Gaussian elimination procedure to solve a general system of linear equations. And we're doing this all in matrix form, typically starting with an augmented matrix for some system of equations. So for example, in the uh, this little matrix that we have right here, we have a augmented matrix, and we see that uh, there's three equations here, one for every row, and, um, and the variables, there's four of the variables. We don't know what their names are. Maybe we'll call them x1, x2, x3, x4. And already this has been reduced to row echelon form. So we probably started with some prior system, and we've reduced it to row echelon form. And I remind you what that means. Okay, that means that um, all the zero rows are at the bottom, as we see here, that the uh, leading entries of the leading rows, so the, the rows which are not zero are called leading rows, and the leftmost entries are called leading entries, and they are staggered to the right as we move down from row to row. And I've circled those two leading entries. So there are two leading entries in this row echelon matrix. Now, as a system of equations, the form of it already tells us that there are going to be solutions. Okay? There are going to be solutions because the last column is not a leading column. So the last column is not a leading column. And that tells us that solutions exist. At least one solution exists, but maybe more. The leading columns in this case are these ones here, the second column and the fourth column. Those are the leading columns. And we're going to see that the other columns, maybe these ones here, the green ones, these are the non-leading columns. They are going to correspond to parameters ultimately in a solution. So just the form of this row echelon matrix tells us what kind of solution we can expect. That this is going to be a two-parameter family of solutions because of those two green non-leading columns on the left-hand side of the matrix. This is also, this one here is also a non-leading uh, column, but it's the non-leading columns on the left-hand side that tell you how many variables are going to be in the, the final solution. Okay, so let's see how that actually translates to, you know, a solution to actually a system. So we can do that by translating this information in the matrix back to a bunch of equations in the variables. And we'll suppose that the variables are x1, x2, x3, x4. Okay, so the first equation has 0x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 plus 3x4 equals minus 1. And the second equation is x4 equals 5. And the third equation is, well... 0 equals 0, or 0x1 zero plus 0x2 zero plus 0x3 zero plus 0x4 zero equals 0. It doesn't tell us anything, but we'll stick it in there anyway because it's part of the system. Okay, so if we were just asked to solve this system of equations in the variables x1, x2, x3, x4, how would we do that? The key is to look at the circled elements, the ones in red, which correspond to the leading entries in the original matrix. So these two leading entries correspond to these particular variables, the x2 and the x4. And what we're going to do is we're going to solve for those leading variables. So we solve for the leading variables. Those are the ones corresponding to the leading columns. in terms of parameters corresponding to the non-leading variables. All right, so in, in this uh, example here, the leading variables 
will be x2 and x4. And the non-leading variables will be x1 and x3. So they have a different relation here. So the, the process of row reduction has singled out some of the variables as being maybe more primary than the others. Okay, we're gonna solve for x2 and x4 in terms of x1 and x3. So how do we do that? Well, let's set x1 equal to a parameter, say lambda, and x3 equal to another parameter, say mu. Okay, so we've agreed that the non-leading variables are going to be parameters in the solution. And then x2 and x4 are going to be defined in terms of them. Okay, and to do that, um, this process is what we're going to call back substitution. It's a kind of a high school method, really, where we're just taking this system of equations now and kind of performing high school algebra with this idea of replacing the non-leading variables with suitable parameters. Okay. And the way the back substitution works is we start at the bottom with the bottom equation of the bottom row and we work our way up. Okay, So with this back substitution, we start at the bottom and work our way up. Okay, so uh, the bottom is this equation x4 equals 5. Okay, so we have the first thing is x4 equals 5. Actually, that's finished. That's already done. We know what x4 is. Okay, and then we go to the next highest row, and I'll just copy that. 2x2, then 2x2 plus x3 plus 3x4 equals minus 1. Okay, and we're solving for x2. Okay, well, we know that x3 is going to be our parameter, mu, and we know that x4 has just been obtained from the previous step. How about circle that one? We know what x4 is. Okay, so now we can write the equation as 2x2 plus x3 is replaced with the parameter mu, and x4 is replaced with 5. So we get that equation. And that uh, is the equation 2x2 equals uh, minus 16 minus mu. Okay, when we solve for x2, we get x2 equals minus 8 minus 1 half mu. And then we can put everything together because now we know all four variables. We have x1 and x3 from up here. We have x2 right here, and we have x4 right here. So we put that, all that together, we get x1 equals lambda, x2 equals minus eight minus one half mu, x3 equals mu, and x4 equals five. So this is a, a solution, and it's an acceptable form of solution. That means that when any values of lambda and mu are given, then we can plug them in there, and we're going to get a solution for the original system, whatever it was. If we want to understand what this is geometrically, well, then we can write it in this form here, sort of separating the things involving lambda, things involving mu, and the things not involving lambda and mu. All right. So the things not involving lambda or mu is the vector 0 minus 8, 0, 5. The lambda is then multiplied by 1, 0, 0, 0. And the mu multiplied by 0 minus a half, 1, 0. And when we have it this way, we recognize that this is a plane in four-dimensional space. Through the point, this point here, through that point, which is, say, A, coordinates 0, minus 8, 0, 5, and it has two direction vectors given by the vectors 1, 0, 0, and 0, minus 1 half, 1, 0. Okay, so that describes a kind of high school approach 
to this second half of the row reduction algorithm to go from a row echelon augmented matrix to a reduced row echelon augmented matrix. So let me remind you about that. So a reduced row echelon matrix. It has um, some, some properties. First of all, all the leading entries are one. Okay. And secondly, all the entries in the leading columns are zero, except for the actual leading entry. So there's kind of two uh, steps that we need to do. We need, if we're starting with a row echelon matrix and we want a reduced row echelon matrix, we have to do two things. So to go from a row echelon matrix to a reduced row echelon matrix, what we do, we need to First of all, renormalize. Renormalize the leading entries to one. And we need to add multiples the leading rows to the rows above them. to clear the columns, the leading columns, of, um, of entries above the, above the leading entries. Now, to do that, uh, the algorithm then is What we do is we um, start with the, the bottom leading row in a row echelon form. And normalize its leading entry To be one. Okay, so we multiply that row by a suitable constant so that the leading entry becomes one. And then what we do is we use that row to eliminate all the entries. Eliminate means reduce to zero. Eliminate all the entries above that leading entry. And we do that by add multiples of the row to the ones above it. Add a multiples of that row, of that leading row, to the ones above it. Then we repeat steps one and two with the next lowest row. Until we've gotten all the way up to the top row. And then once we've gotten there, well, we're finished uh, because then everything above the leading entries will also be zero. And then the matrix will be in reduced row echelon form. Okay, so let's see how it works in an example. So let's start with something in row echelon form. Say uh, one, two, three, minus one, 
five, four, zero, eight, twelve, zero, zero, three, minus three. Okay, also zeros here. Okay, this is a matrix in row echelon form because these leading entries here, okay, are staggered to the right. And all the zero rows, which there aren't any, are at the bottom. I want to point out that at this point here, before we actually proceed, we should check that the last column is not a leading column. Because if the last column is a leading column, if one of these circled leading entries is in the last column, then the whole thing has no solutions and there's no point in going further because you're not going to find any solutions no matter what you do. Okay, so let's just check, check that the last column, the one on the right hand side, is not leading. Okay, that's good. Yes, it's not leading. There it is right there. That column there is not leading because it doesn't have a red circled entry. Okay, there's no leading entry in that column. It's not leading. That means that solutions do exist. So we know solutions exist. Maybe one, maybe a one parameter family, maybe a two parameter family, etc. But some solutions definitely exist. And so now the purpose is to find those solutions. Okay, so let's perform our algorithm. We are going to start with the bottom row, okay? That bottom pivot is three. We want to change that three into a one. So we're going to replace row three with one third of row three. In other words, we're going to be dividing that last row by three. So the first row stays where it is. The second row stays where it is. The third row becomes 0, 0, 0, 1, minus 1. Okay, so there's the new leading entry. There are the leading entries now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate the things above that leading entry of 1 that we just found at the bottom. We're going to eliminate this 8, and we're going to eliminate this minus 1. So we're going to do two steps at once. The new row 2 is going to be the old row 2 minus 8 times row 3. And the new row 1 is going to be the old row 1 plus row 3. Okay, so we can kind of start at the bottom here actually because that bottom row is not going to change. We're going in the opposite direction than we did with the Gaussian elimination. The first half of the procedure sort of goes from the top to the bottom. This second half of the procedure goes from the bottom up to the top. Okay, so what do we say we're going to do? We're going to add, uh, we're going to subtract eight times the third row from the second. Okay, so we're going to have zero, four, zero, eight minus eight will be zero. That's what we're arranging. And 12 minus 8 times minus 1, that's like 12 plus 8, that's 20. It's 20. And the first row, we're adding the third row to it. So we get a 1, a 2, a 3, 1 plus minus 1 is a 0, and 5 plus minus 1 is 4. Great. Okay, so now we're going to work with this next row from the bottom. So we're now at the second bottom row. And that entry 4, we have to change that into a 1. Okay, well that's easy, we're just going to divide. So the row 2 is going to be 1 quarter of the old row 2. So everything stays the same, except that we just divide everything by 4, the second row. 1, 0, 0, divide by 4, we get 5. And the last row stays where it is. Great. And now we're going to use this entry that we're sort of working on to eliminate everything above it, namely that 2. Okay, what happens? Uh, well, we're going to take row 1. The new row 1 is going to be the old row 1 minus 2 times row 2. So we're going to subtract 2 times row 2 from row 1, which will give us 1. 2 minus 2 is 0. 3 minus 0, 3, 0. Now, 4 minus 2 times 5, so that's minus 6. 
Second row stays where it is. The third row stays where it is. And now we're in a happy situation because the leading entries have only zeros otherwise in their columns. So the leading columns here, the leading columns are all cleared of entries except for the leading entries. All the other entries are zero. Now there's one non-leading, this one is a non-leading column and that corresponds to a parameter. Okay, so let's see how it unfolds. So let's suppose that the variables are, we don't know what the variables are, so let's suppose the variables are x1, x2, x3, and x4, right? There's, all, there's four of them because there's four columns on the left-hand side of the matrix, one corresponding to each variable. So what have we just decided? We're going to set the non-leading variable, which is the third one, equal to a parameter. So we're going to set x3 equal to some parameter lambda. So now we solve for the other variables. Um, actually, we don't really have to do it from the bottom, but we can do it, um, we just write, write them all down because we've already done that work of eliminating the, the, zero, the entries above the leading entries. So we're going to solve for the other variables. Let's write down the three equations here. So the first one is x1 plus 0x2, I won't write that, plus 3x3. But instead of writing x3, we know that x3 is lambda, so I'm just going to write plus 3 lambda. Plus 0x4, I'm not going to write that, equals minus 6. So that first equation becomes that one, involving x1, which is one of our leading variables, and involving this parameter, lambda. Okay, the next equation is x2 equals uh, just 5, and the next one is um, x4 equals minus 1. So altogether, we can maybe come over here. So we see that the solution is x1, x2, x3, x4 equals, equals uh, x1 is what? It's minus 6 minus 3 lambda, solving for x1. x2 was just 5. x3 is the parameter lambda. And x4 is minus 1. So we don't have to rewrite this we get a one parameter family of solutions. And uh, okay, that's i.e. a line, a line in this four dimensional space. And we could, if we want to, or we could write this as Say we, x is the vector which doesn't involve anything having to do with lambda, so minus 6, 5, 0, minus 1, plus lambda times some vector, which will be minus 3, 0, 1, 0. Okay, so if we write it that way, separating the things involving lambda and things not involving lambda, then geometrically we see that this is a line through the point minus 6, 5, 0, 1, in the direction or with direction vector, the vector minus three, zero, one, zero. All right, so that's that's the row reduction algorithm. Okay, so there's two steps. We start with the general system. Okay, we start with the general system. We write down the augmented matrix. Okay, so maybe I'll write that down. So. So the review then, of what we've accomplished, is we start with a system of equations, linear equations, and then we write down the augmented matrix. That's what we are working with. Okay. And then what we do is we perform row reduction, or Gaussian elimination, 
to get a row echelon matrix. And at this stage, there's two things that can happen. One is that the last column is leading. Last column is a leading column. In which case, there's no solutions. The system has no solutions, okay, if the last column is leading. The other possibility is the last column is, is not leading. Okay. In that case, what we do is we carry on. We have to do more work. Okay, We have to do more work. We have to do this sort of second half, second half of row reduction that I've described in this lecture to get to a reduced row echelon matrix. Okay, and then from there, what we do is we, I'll do it in black. Uh, from there, what we do is we introduce, introduce variables or parameters, parameters for each uh, non-leading column on the left-hand side. So corresponding to the variables on the left hand side. And then we solve, then we solve for the leading variables in terms of these parameters. And then well, and then we, you know, put everything together and uh, exhibit, exhibit the solution. There may be only one, or maybe the solution set. So that's that's the entire uh, story. That's uh, row reduction. Okay, it's a very powerful algorithm which is a key technology for solving all kinds of problems in linear algebra, okay? So many things computationally ultimately boil down to this. And, uh, and there's some tricks, you know, to, to make things a little bit smoother and, and to simplify things. And we'll see some of that as we look to uh, examples. So we're going to be uh, doing a lot of examples of this, okay, to get uh, better at it um, in a number of different uh, applications. So we'll see all of that uh, happening.